For the past couple of months, fundraisers have been making some interesting moves in their E-Read and E-Fund strategies. One of the most interesting uh, moves that they've made is the consolidation of the existing six income-based E-Reads into one large income-based interval fund. Now, Fundrise claims they're doing that in order to reduce the operating costs, in order to reduce the amount of money it takes to manage and run these e-reads. And of course, it makes sense. It is probably a lot cheaper and cost efficient to run one big interval fund as opposed to six smaller e-reads. Now, could this be the real reason that Fundrise is consolidating their uh, e-reads and e-funds? Or is there something bigger on their mind coming up? If you're new to the channel, my name is Trey and I have over $545,000 invested in stocks, real estate and crypto. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe and as well as check out my entire Funrise playlist down in the description below. It has everything and anything you need to know before, during and after investing with Funrise. Now, let's continue. On April 1st of 2022, Funrise merged six income-focused e-reads into one interval fund called Funrise Income Real Estate Fund. This fund will be holding 37 assets worth $452 million. And the short name for it will be the income fund. Due to this change, the good old interval fund, yes, the one that gave all of us at least 46% return in 2021, will change its name to flagship fund. Now guys, make sure you watch this entire video because I have a crazy, crazy opinion of why Fundrise is doing it. But before I let you know what it is that they're actually trying to do, I wanna go over this merger. Now, because Fundrise are merging six E-REITs into one, prior to the merger, Fundrise updated the net asset value per share of each fund involved using an independent appraisal firm. So what you had before is you had six E-REITs and each of these E-REITs had a certain price per share. Well, when combining six into one, they need to come up with a new price per share for that one interval fund. So this allowed for each investor to receive a correct ownership percentage of the newly merged fund. Now, let's take a look at the picture here. So what this does, what this picture shows, that actually shows the price per share on January 1st of 2022 and the new appraisal that was done on March 31st of 2022. As you could see, the values haven't changed dramatically. So the value of your shares of these E-REITs and if this one single new income interval fund will likely not change significantly. Now guys, Fundrise claims that they're doing this merger because they want to bring down the uh, costs of running these e-reads, these e-funds, the operational costs, uh, the, the, you know, the number of fund managers they got to pay to run all these e-reads. However, um, and I do think that this is part of the reasoning for doing this. However, I think the bigger, I think the much bigger reason they're doing this, they're consolidating because they're getting ready to go public. So I think what will happen in the near future is that Fundrise will keep consolidating uh, their e-reads. The first thing they did is that they consolidated their income-based e-reads. The next thing they're going to do is they're going to consolidate their balanced portfolio um, e-reads. And then they're going to consolidate their long-term growth plus e-reads. So I think right before Fundrise will be going public, what is going to happen is that we're going to have five or six um, different e-reads reads and e-funds and that would be it. It does reduce the cost of running these e-reads and e-funds, giving more profits to us, the investors, but it also makes them look like a strong company. So what does that mean? If you are a current Fundrise IPO holder, you should be super excited about this because we are getting closer to the day that Fundrise goes public. This is a direct move in consolidating their 
assets in order to be taken seriously by Wall Street. And this is an amazing thing. I'm super happy about it. Now, guys, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, what is Fundrise IPO? Well, Fundrise IPO is something called Internet Public Offering. As some of you may know, Fundrise is a private company. However, they do um, sell shares to the people, to the investors, um, to the people who are currently investing with Fundrise. You get these uh, personalized offers uh, once every year or two years to buy shares of Fundrise as a company, not the e written e fund, um, you know, that they're managing, but Fundrise as a company. And what a lot of us, including myself, and I have over $15,000 in Fundrise IPO, what we're hoping for is that when Fundrise does go public, we will make a lot of money. We're talking 3x, 4x, 5x um, on our investment. So, guys, if you if if this just got you excited and you're new to Fundrise, first what you gotta do is you open you gotta open a Fundrise account. I will leave I, I will leave my referral link down in the description below. And if you open the account with that referral link, you will get fifty dollar bonus into your account, deposited right away. Um, as 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 long as you uh, put ten dollars. Uh, into that account. The next thing you got to do is you got to be patient. You got to wait about six months and then you will get a personalized offer from Fundrise to purchase IPO shares. Now, I have a couple of videos about Fundrise IPO. Check them out in the Fundrise playlist link down in the description below. Now, let's continue. Now that you know what I really think this move is all about, let's go into some details um, uh, about what uh, changes uh, me and you will see uh, with this new merger. Merger. All right, so the strategy for this new income fund will remain the same as for the six separate e reads and the strategies to pursue an income focused return profile, meaning collecting interest uh, from land developers to which Fundrise have landed the money, as well as uh, you know getting money from rent. For the past two years, the income based investment portfolios, um, you know, uh, uh, have been trailing the likes of the balanced and the growth portfolios, primarily due to interest rates being at an all time low. Lower interest rates mean that Fundrise will receive less money from these land developers. However, as many of you I'm sure know, the Fed is slowly starting to increase these rates throughout the 2022. Uh, the income yields will likely start to increase and come close to the, uh, uh, to the pre-pandemic averages. So we will likely see an increase in our profits from the income-based investments and it will become closer to those profits from the balanced and the long-term growth plus or long-term growth portfolios. It is true that during uncertain volatile times like we're experiencing today, it is very hard for Fundrise to deploy capital into projects with complete confidence. And why is that? Well, what if we're at the top of the real estate market? The real estate have completely like blew it out of the water in the past year and a half. The prices of the houses have gone up. The prices of materials have gone up. The prices of metals have gone up. It, it is so hard to invest when things have gone up like 40, 50 percent in like 18 months. So. I'm hesitant as well in investing in not only in, in real estate, but in the stock market as well. Because when something goes up that high in a certain amount of, uh, in a small amount of time, uh, it, it is likely to be the top. We're, we're likely to see a little correction, a, a pullback, right? So you never, you know, Fundrise has a lot of money sitting on the side. They're ready to invest. But where do you invest it? Because if you buy the top, Hey, it's just going to come down in a couple of months, right? So Fundrise and ourselves as investors and stock investors, crypto investors, same thing with crypto, right? We need to be patient. We need to look. We need to find the right opportunity. Patience is key. Things never just always go up. There's always a pullback. So that is, that, that is why it is very, very hard for Fundrise to deploy the capital um, at this point in time. However... I believe that a fundrise strategy has survived the pandemic, and it did. Look at the returns. I believe that fundrise can survive 
through today as well. And what I mean by today, I mean the pandemic is, is, is probably almost over, right? But there's still residual effects from the pandemic. And of course, we have the war in Ukraine. Another thing that I also believe is that Fundrise will also begin taking uh, a bit more risk with their landing. So here's what Fundrise stated in this article. And I quote, in some cases, this may mean things like, uh, um, and in some cases, this may mean things like landing to borrowers who are executing on residential value add strategies. So private house uh, developers or just contractors who buy an old broken down house and then they build it up, um, including zoning, entitlement and or construction and development. So, for example, if I decide to buy uh, some shithole down the road, uh, you know, for $200,000 and I want to, you know, completely demolish it, build a new mansion that I could sell for $800,000. Because, uh, you know, I'm not a huge company. Uh, I'm just one person, a contractor. It is obviously more risky for them to lend the money to me. However, they can ask for higher interest rates from people like me and private contractors, as opposed to huge corporations that have so much money in their reserves that they will be able to pay the interest rates, even if the economy uh, even if the real estate market tends to pull back or even crash. Uh, so these types of investments typically have higher rates of return uh, because it's higher interest rates and less competition from lenders due to being slightly outside most lenders approved criteria. So most lenders, we're talking JP Morgan, Chase, you know, all these big banks that are funding this stuff. Uh, you know, they think it's too risky. They think you could default on your loan because you're just a private contractor and you're just improving one house. But Fundrise uh, thinks that that is the best strategy uh, to continue seeing good returns. Uh, so a couple of other things that you will be seeing because of the merger, uh, there will be some changes to the dashboard. Uh, so let's look at the transactions page here. Right, so this is the transaction page and I'm just gonna show you one thing. My, as many of you know, the, my portfolio is a long-term growth plus portfolio, so I'm not affected by this merger as some of uh, you guys who are income-based or balanced, um, uh, who have income-based or balanced uh, portfolios. But the one thing you're going to see here is these two transactions. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I only have $310 invested uh, in, uh, in, in, in an income-based asset, so Fundrise. So the first uh, transaction you will see is this merge out transaction and your number will probably be higher than this. This number, okay, so um, this, uh, this number uh, will have the value of all your um, investments in, the, in those six old income-based E-REITs combined together. That will be the value there. That will be the merge out transaction. And you're gonna see a merged in transaction of income real estate fund. That is that new interval fund that they're starting. Uh, and this, these two values will be the same. So what happened was that, remember that independent appraisal uh, firm that I told you about? They appraised the six E-REITs and that got translated into uh, this total number, this total number that you're gonna see here, right? So that means that is how much those six uh, those six E-REITs are worth together. And what's gonna happen is that we're gonna merge them out and merge them in as the new uh, income real estate fund. So th the value should be the same. And finally, one last thing. Uh, that I wanted to mention, right, because some people are worried about the tax implications of this merger. Well, the merger is not a taxable event, and of course you can request to redeem the shares of this income fund as early as April 1st, 2022, because that is when that fund became official. The redemption request made before March 31st, 2022 will not be affected by this merger. So. This is your opportunity to get out of these income-based and balanced portfolios and get into the long-term growth portfolios, guys. Take this opportunity if you want. 
Okay, so for the year of 2022, you will likely receive tax documents for both the, the new income fund and the six old funds. Uh, because uh, well, for the first uh, for the first four months, it was the six separate uh, e reads, and then for the for, for the next uh, for the next uh, eight or nine months, it will be just one interval fund. So so those will be the taxes. They're going to be a little bit more complicated this year, but next year it's going to be much easier. So guys. Um, one last time, I just wanna, I just wanna uh, state it one more time that I think uh, even though this merger will reduce the operating costs, uh, you know, of, of of running these e reads, and this that in turn will obviously give us a little bit more returns, right? Not too much. However, I think the bigger reason why Fundrise is doing this is because they're getting ready to go public. Now, I'm not talking about 2022 or 2023. I think two or three, you know, probably five years at most, we're going public. They will start merging all these other things. Soon enough, we will only see four, five, maybe six different uh, interval funds um, in our portfolio. And that will be the key. Uh, I think we will see great returns with the IPO, uh, great returns with these new interval funds. And... Uh, uh, I'm really happy about this, guys. Now I want to ask you: Do you th what do you think about this merger? Uh, do you think this is uh, why Fundrise? Um, do you think that Fundrise is doing this because they're ready to go public, or do you think it's simply just to reduce the cost of operating by like 0.15% or something like that? Leave your comments down in the description below. I'm really uh, interested of well, you know what other people are thinking. I uh, hope you enjoyed the content. Make sure to like and subscribe, guys. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. It's Triple Tray One. I would greatly appreciate it, man. Um, I just started uh, those social media, uh, and if you have uh, um, and, and, and you know, uh, you know, and stay tuned for the next video in which we'll talk about a them new referral program that Fundrise have started. We'll see if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Peace.